Welcome to Listen Here, the audiobook podcast where we bring you chapter listens of our much loved audiobooks and sometimes special guest appearances like today. Today we have two amazing guests on this episode of Listen Here. First up, we have Alice Faye Duncan, the author of Opal Lee and What It Means to Be Free. And we are also blessed to have Bonnie Turpin, narrator extraordinaire. Alice Faye Duncan is a national board certified teacher who writes for young learners. Memory is her motivation, and she writes to help children remember important moments from African-American history. Her books are celebrated for vivid imagery and lyrical texts that sound like music. Alice Faye Duncan is the recipient of the 2019 Coretta Scott King Honor Medal. Without further delay, I'm gonna let Alice introduce herself and hear a little bit more about her journey with Opal Lee and what it means to be free. Hi there, my name is Alice Faye Duncan and I am the author of several books. I'm the author of Yellow Dog Blues, Memphis Martin and the Mountaintop, and what's what else? Let's see. Uh, a Song for Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, Evicted, The Struggle for the Right to Vote. Mm, there are many books, but I am absolutely delighted and proud of being the author of Opal Lee and What It Means to Be Free, The True Story of the grandmother of Juneteenth. And today, it is a delightful, plum-pleasing pleasure to speak to you about my book. Opal Lee is such an inspiring and important story to tell. There are a lot of lessons to be learned for all ages. And what is one that you hope anyone, from children to adults, takes away from reading or listening to your book? When children and adults read Opal Lee and what it means to be free, I want them to understand that we are all God's children. And as the children of God, each of us, every one of us, deserves freedom and joy. Freedom, hope, and joy divine, Juneteenth means it's freedom time. How did you prepare to tell Opal Lee's story, especially to be best understood by children? Before writing the Opal Lee story, I read a variety of poetry books. I read poets like Langston Hughes, Gwendolyn Brooks, and Maya Angelou. Reading poetry inspired me to write my book in a way that was lyrical, like a song. It inspired me to write my book like poetry because poetry is easy for children to understand. And while the book talks about some hard things like American slavery, writing this story in a poetic way made it an enjoyable experience, or I should say writing about it in a poetic way makes my book an enjoyable experience for young readers. Juneteenth is such an incredibly important day in our history, yet it's only become widely known during the last few years, mostly thanks to Opal Lee. For those who are new to celebrating the day, what are some great ways to pay homage to the day's history? There are several things that adults and children can do together to celebrate Juneteenth. My first recommendation is that children and adults should or could or try to make friends with children and adults who do not live in their neighborhood or go to the school or church they attend. We should all be intentional to build connections with friends who do not share our racial or cultural background. Why? Freedom, justice, liberation. These things happen when we learn to appreciate and respect each other. 
despite our differences. The second thing I would suggest in celebration of Juneteenth, we could or we can organize picnics to celebrate the holiday. And then the third thing that I would recommend, especially for children, I encourage them to write a poem in honor of the Juneteenth holiday and then share that poem with grandparents or uncles and aunts to educate them about the holiday. Because you know what? Few adults understand the meaning of Juneteenth. How did you prepare to tell Opal Lee's story, especially to be best understood by children? At this time in America, in our great nation, there is so much despair, so much lack of joy and happiness. And yet, like John in the wilderness, there are still these still quiet voices that inspire us to do better, to stand tall, to speak up, to be a bridge and a help to one another. And three of those voices that I celebrate and that I look to for inspiration are number one, uh, Dr. King's granddaughter. Her name is Yolanda King. She's a teenager who right now at this time, she's using her voice for student rights and social justice. Another person that I admire is Coach Deion Sanders at the University of Colorado, who is using his voice to speak up for young athletes and college students who deserve quality education. And because I write poetry and I love poems. I also, I'm impressed and I admire Amanda Gorman, the young writer who uses poetry as an instrument of social change. The reality of it is that each of us, no matter how young we are, uh, no matter how experienced, wise we are, no matter how much we have lived, Each of us is called by the Lord to do something purposeful, loving, and kind, important in the kingdom of God. And so like Yolanda Renee King, like Coach Deion Sanders, like Amanda Gorman, each of us must find our calling. Each of us must find the reason why we have been put in the earth to make a difference, to be a light, to be love for others. Opal Lee and What It Means to Be Free by Alice Faye Duncan celebrates the life and legacy of a modern day black leader while sharing a message of hope, unity, joy, and strength. Every year, Opal looked forward to the Juneteenth picnic, a drumming, dancing, delicious party. She knew from Granddaddy Zach's stories that Juneteenth celebrated the day the Freedom News of President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation finally sailed into Texas in 1865, over two years after the president had declared it. But Opal didn't always see freedom in her Texas town. Then one Juneteenth day, when Opal was 12 years old, an angry crowd burned down her brand new home. This wasn't freedom at all, She had to do something. But could one person's voice make a difference? Could Opal bring about national recognition of Juneteenth? Follow Opal Lee as she fights to improve the future by honoring the past. Through the story of Opal Lee's determination and persistence, children will learn all people are created equal, the power of bravery and using your voice for change, the history of Juneteenth or Freedom Day, and what it means today, that no one is free unless everyone is free, and that fighting for a dream is worth the difficulty experienced along the way. Let's hear a sneak peek of Opal Lee and what it means to be free, and be sure to stay tuned after the excerpt to hear from narrator Bonnie Turpin and what this story means to her. Happy Juneteenth Jamboree. Come and join the fun.
Opal Lee waved to her great-grandson as he barreled across the park. He zipped past lines of picnic tables covered with platters of barbecue, baked beans, tomato tarts, and raspberry cobbler. He hurried past a leaping choir draped in purple robes. He danced a jig with cowboys playing fiddles, but they did not stop his flow. Buddy ran to the blooming tree where Opal Lee held court. Her braided hair was a silver crown. Her eyes were twinkling stars. Great grand dear, Buddy called. Tell us a Juneteenth story. Opal Lee raised her face to the sun as memories of yesteryear filled her vision. When she had been a Texas bud like the children at her feet, Granddaddy Zack told freedom stories on his wooden porch. As Opal Lee remembered his words, she lifted her hands and cheered, Juneteenth means freedom, and now it's story time. Then Opal Lee began. Once upon a blazing sun, black bodies were bought and sold like cattle. Black men plowed the fields, but were not allowed to own the land. Black women cooked the food, but were not allowed to feast on roast and ribs from the master's table. Black children cleaned the one-room schoolhouses, but were not allowed to read or write. Earning and learning were against the law. Slavery was a thief. American slavery dragged on like a plague until January 1st, 1863. That's when President Lincoln wielded courage and raised his feathered pen. He signed the Emancipation Proclamation with a mighty stroke. On the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves shall be forever free. Bonnie Turpin is widely known for her narration of books like The Help, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, Children of Blood and Bone, The Hate You Give, and dozens, if not hundreds more. She has won countless awards for her narrations, including Audible's Narrator of the Year, and has been inducted into Audible's Narrator Hall of Fame. Let's hear what working on Opal Lee and what it means to be free meant to her. Hello, this is Bonnie Turpin, narrator of Opal Lee and what it means to be free. When you were approached to narrate Opal Lee and what it means to be free, what were your first thoughts about the project and the story? Um, when I was first approached to narrate Opal Lee and what it means to be free, I was very pleased um, to get to voice this story. Um, and I think it's really important that stories like this are made beautiful for children, for especially for black children, to hear the painful parts of our past made beautiful with the beautiful illustrations and the words and the story of how people persevered. What does it mean to you to be involved in the story of Opal Lee and helping to teach and inspire children to be accepting and follow their own dreams? What that means to me, I feel like I partially mentioned it before. Um, you know, if, if you're the parent of a black child or any child, really, telling them that at one time, point in time, their great, great, great grandparents were held captive and forced to work for, you know, no money and, and slavery and all of that legacy, that hurts to tell to your child, and and it's hard for a children's mind to grasp that that could happen. But in this story, it is it's told in a way I think that a, a child's mind can um, can see and also be um, revel in the triumph of having overcome that time. Now. So um, it's, it's great to be a part of that story. When I was a child, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of uh, reflections of me around me other than my own family. 
I didn't see uh, black people on television uh, frequently. I didn't have um, black dolls or toys until uh, later in my childhood. And I was uh, at, an, at a private school. Most of my classmates were white. And my parents didn't tell me about slavery. And it was, um, it was a shock when I found out. And I was actually told by another child at school when I was in maybe the second grade. So that was a little bit traumatic. And so <laughs> it would have been great if I had stories like this or my parents had stories like this to share with me. We would love to hear more about your narration process and if you approached Opal Lee the same way as your other projects. Question number three, the narration process. Uh, basically, I read the book and if I decide on there's a that there's a special uh, voice or character, I may plan ahead and I may just do it off the cuff. It's pretty, uh, and for a book, a, a fairly short children's book like this, there's not a whole lot of uh, preparation, for me anyway. This question is from one of your biggest fans here at HarperCollins, and she would love to know how you are able to keep up with all of your amazingly different voices. Do you have a process for creating them, or do they just come naturally when you read a book? Um, I don't keep up with all the amazingly different voices. A character appears to me a certain way, and I am trying to make that personality come through the voice. And so I don't always know what they're going to exactly sound like, but I am reading from their personality. I am embodying them in a way. And so that's how the voice comes out. Sometimes I have a thought that a character sounds like a certain person I know or may have known. But sometimes, um, you know, and there just sometimes there's a description of how a character would sound. But usually I'm, I'm just going on my intuition of who I think this person is. And that's what I try to voice. For those who haven't listened to Opal Lee and what it means to be free, what are some reasons they might want to listen to this with their kids? And I think I've, I've already said this earlier. Um, this is a great way to break it to your kids. <laughs> some of the horrors that have gone on in the American history and um, what has happened to people of African descent in this country. And also to encourage them that we have overcome some of the greatest difficulties you could imagine to be where we are today. And we still have, you know, we as a country still have a lot of work to do in terms of acceptance and tolerance and love, really, love for each other and for everyone. Um, I think that's the main, the main uh, goal, <laughs> to get to a point where we all see each other as fellow human beings who deserve love and respect and healthy living conditions <laughs> and and the best of everything and this beautiful world. Okay. Some, some discussions are hard, you know, for kids. And um, I'm not really a parent, but it would certainly be difficult for me to explain this to my child, to explain um, their legacy in a way that does not let them become diminished. Thank you. We would like to say thank you to Alice Faye Duncan and Bonnie Turpin for taking the time to speak with us today. And thank you for spending time with us. And we hope you have enjoyed this episode of Listen Here. You can learn more about the author, Alice Faye Duncan, by visiting her website, alicefayduncan.com. Check back next week for more audiobook samples and maybe a special guest or two. Follow us wherever you listen to podcasts or find us on Instagram and TikTok at Listen Here Podcast. Visit our website, listenherepodcast.com for more information or to find the books we've talked about.